Hi, I'm Max, and I'm from Diamond. I was from Youthography. So I bring this up because in the 25 years or so that I've been involved in marketing, I've spent most of them trying to understand young people. Uh, for a while, owning and operating my own firm called Youthography. And then you turn 40 plus and it gets kind of creepy to be focusing exclusively on young people. But I've always had this great passion in youth culture and youth marketing. And I'm hopefully going to be bringing all of that to the table, not just what we've learned over the past couple of months, but in fact, what I've learned in the couple of decades leading up to this. And this is a presentation about youth marketing. So I feel a little bit weird right now talking about this because it is a very uncertain time and it does feel like things are really changing and who knows what is happening. But the world, hopefully for us, keeps on moving forward. And so this is what we do. We talk about the context of something, whether it's great or small, and we have an awful lot of context to talk about today in terms of young people and COVID and what it means to us. Now, typically, I focus on two generations of youth. That's Gen Y or millennials who we say were born between 1980 and 1996. And that's also Generation Z, the generation that follows them who were born between 1996 and 2015. These are two generations that have been discussed more than any others, I would say, in all the time that we've been talking about marketing to young people. But it's interesting for me because I'm a member of Generation X and I've actually never really gotten to talk about Generation X which is honestly the most Generation X thing you could ever possibly say. Like here's a couple of tweets by a couple of Generation X types that blew up in the last month. It's Generation Xers very publicly talking about how invisible they are and addressing millennials and boomers while they do it, while they just get crazy traction on Twitter. That's Gen, Gen X in a nutshell. So look, I'm hating this pandemic and I'm hating this isolation as much as I think most of us are. And I don't want to sound like that one person, you know, who's used this time to get like super in shape and personally repaint their house while the rest of us are essentially just carbs and Netflix. But this is actually a super exciting time for the nerdy cultural anthropologist in me and for the narcissist in me, because finally it's a moment for Generation X to be front and center. I mean, sure, it's taken a global pandemic for this to happen, but after decades of millennials and Generation Z just dominating all of the headlines, we're finally getting this. And pay attention to some of the language that we're seeing in these articles that say things like Generation X is better equipped than millennials and better prepared than any other generation to deal with this pandemic right now. For the first time since the ascent of millennials in the late 1990s and the explosion of youth marketing, Generation X is front and center amongst younger than boomer generations. And this demonstrates a kind of moment relevant mindset that other cohorts can only aspire to. That's happened for the first time ever in my career studying young people. And then this, the highest honor of them all, memes. Gen X got memes. We, got, we never get memes. And look, we got, we got memes with Devo and we got memes with the original Red Dawn. I think as soon as you get memes with Swayze, you know something really crazy is happening. Like, the expression goes, Mo Swayze, Mo Crazy. Um, and even memes with reality bites, which I think is probably the most Gen X-y of any movie ever. I mean, I know it's Wednesday, not Friday, but time is a blur right now and days no longer have any meaning. And I thought I was on a roll with this whole meme thing, so I thought I would come in and do this. But here, here's what I'm noticing for the first time ever. I've never seen a youth cohort make a comeback. We never get to talk about how we acted when we were teenagers 30 years ago as if it's cool right now. That's not how it works. Usually, it's whatever younger generation is dominant in the moment making fun of those of us who used to be young. That's where whatever Karen and OK Boomer have come from, right? It's teenagers calling Gen Xers Karen as a way to dismissively say that they've gotten too old, or millennials saying OK Boomer as a way to say that older generations are out of touch. And it happens when we seem to be way too proud of our youthful past or when we were younger. So this is an article about Gen Z calling Gen X the Karen generation, and it actually uses reality bites in a negative way, while Gen Xers right now feel confident enough to use reality bites in a positive way. This is literally a screen cap from a parliamentary session in New Zealand in which a 25 or 26-year-old politician was putting forth a climate response plan. And she faced some opposition from an older rival politician, and she shut him down just by saying, okay, Boomer, this is how it's supposed to be. The younger generation's dismissing anyone even older than they are. 
So I was wondering, like, what is happening right now? Is it actually possible that Gen X is making a comeback? I was thinking, should we start a company called Middle Ageography, or should I get ready to buy Big Shiny Tunes, volumes 9 through 47 or something? I'm thinking, is, is this generation, Gen X, about to supplant millennials and Generation Z as the coolest generation out there? No, no, we're not. But there is something really interesting happening in youth marketing in this moment right now, and that is that something has changed. And we can't tell you if it's going to change forever or if it's going to change back, but we can say this. For the first time in my career anyway, I think it's instructive to not just look at two generations of young people, but actually to look at three. When we think of understanding youth in a post and during COVID world, we can look at the past, the present, and the future all at once with a broader lens. Since everything feels so uncertain, we should be addressing young people according to first principles that hopefully transcend any one generation of young people and in fact connect to what it means to be young, period. So we're going to look at these three cohorts of young and younger people together. And we're going to do that in four areas. We're going to talk about how the kids were all right. We're going to talk about extended adolescence. We're going to talk about digital natives. And we're going to talk about Generation C for Generation COVID.